Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us at this new uh, Meet Over Lunch program that we are organizing today. And I'm delighted to welcome Daniela Holben, who will be um, presenting the art fair platform that I personally find very interesting and a potentially em very empowering tool for artists to be able to uh, communicate directly with collectors. Daniela will go much more in depth into um, what Art Fair is about. But Daniela is also a curator. Um, she's worked at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, at Manor Contemporary, Fashion and Textile Museum in London. She's done many, many very interesting uh, projects um, as an independent curator, including director of programs at No Sphere Art, which is a platform, a mobile platform that produces and presents public arts programming across several venues around New York City. So Daniela, thank you so much for uh, doing this presentation and I look very much forward to finding out in depth about Art Fair. Thank you, Natalie, and thank you, Residency Unlimited, for putting this together. I think it's such a beautiful series and lunchtime to meet with different types of professional and art uh, world people to discuss different things. Um, as Natalie mentioned, I am involved with many different projects. I work, uh, my backbone is mostly nonprofit, but um, I've always been very interested in uh, helping artists and uh, creating artist centric platforms and stages. So um, I, when I found and I ran uh, into uh, Art Fair, that was at that point in 2018, just an idea. Um, I was very excited to join and to help build it and to help uh, form what we have now as Art Fair. And um, that's what I'm going to present to you today. And we also have some plans for the future. And I'm also gonna go over that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, if you don't mind waiting until the end of the presentation, um, you can also start typing them in in the chat box as we go along. And then at the end of the presentation, I'm going to go over it and, and we can have a QA. and a um, So yeah, I'm going to share my screen now. Let's see. Um, And great. So it seems like this started at the end, so I'm gonna go through quickly. <laughs> um, so Art Fair. Art Fair is a digital platform most and foremost. Um, and what we can what you can find on Art Fair is you can discover our profession artists uh, with a professional working uh, career. Um, and this is our motto. Um, we pretty much want to connect patrons and our patrons we consider as anyone from an art collector, an art lover, an art professional, and also fellow artists. It is really about connecting the artists directly to their audiences and that audience can be very broad. And we want to create tools for artists to connect to their audiences and, and for us to grow that community. Um, across um, across the U.S. now and eventually an international platform. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Art Fair is a curated group of professional working artists, and we present we we're mostly presenting them through our digital platforms, which are an app, an iOS Apple version of an app, and then our web platform, so our website. Um, and the app itself, and I'm gonna go over it a little bit with images later so I can explain exactly how it works, but it is a very interactive feature of our platform uh, because what uh, patrons can do is they can follow artists, they can save artworks, they can set up studio visits, uh, they can uh, ask a professional question and they can find out about any type of uh, news that artists have like exhibitions that are happening at that moment. And then they can also uh, buy artwork directly from the artist. Um, it, uh, the app itself has a localized focus, which allows for um, artists to, and patrons to meet in person. Um, and when let's say an, a patron is either traveling or is in their own town and they wanna connect directly to an artist. 
and it fosters relationships and connections ra rather than simply having an online platform where you can buy work um, or exist only in the digital space. So when we started Art Fair, that was our big selling point is we wanted to be a platform that connects the artist directly to their patron and that these two people, these two entities meet in person. Because the idea is that we believe that although the digital sphere is very important to connect and to build a, um, a following for an artist, it is truly seeing work in person that I don't think it will ever get replaced by the di digital sphere and the digital world. So I think digital tools are important, but I think seeing art in person and meeting in, in person um, is always going to be there and it's always gonna be the backbone of the art world. Um, so I'm gonna go over a few other aspects of uh, our history. We started Art Fair in 2019. Uh, we are New York based um, and we initially started Art Fair only for New York artists. And that it was because what Art Fair tries to be is it tries to create art hubs and communities by cities. So when someone opens the Art Fair app, they can, they can connect directly to artists in the community and see where their studios are located. Um, so it has this local focus and a community focus. We wanna build communities. We want people to gather. We want people to meet each other. We want people to uh, go visit both your studio and your exhibitions and anything that you might have um, in a brick and mortar space. So we started that in 2019 with New York and then we've been slowly expanding to the rest of the US. We have around 600 artist members right now on Art Fair and um, a few gallery members and I'll go over that uh, in a little bit of time. Um, our artists are invited to Art Fair. Um, as we are highly curated. We also have an application process that we review on a monthly basis. Um, most of our artists are anywhere from emerging to more established, and they all have an active studio practice. And we work with artists of all kinds of backgrounds and also with full gallery representation or uh, artists that only work with galleries on a part-time basis. So, um, that's that. We have a few um, partners. The thing about Art Fair is we've always tried to align ourselves with the art world that it, as it exists here in New York and also internationally. So we have a growing board of cultural advisors uh, right now made up of Fong Bui, Neville Wakefield, and Nicola Vessel. Um, we also work in collaboration with uh, small galleries, artist rent spaces, nonprofits, and all kinds of if different uh, foundation and companies and entities that are focused on the artist. And some examples here are some of the events we've had in the past with NADA, we've worked with the Tamarit Institute, we've worked with the Assembly Room, we've worked with Brick, uh, and we've worked and we continue working with the Brooklyn Rail as they are one of our partners. And this is a little map. Um, I wanted to show you, I'm gonna start showing you screen shares of what the app looks like. You don't have to have the app to experience Art Fair. We also have a website that pretty much reflects the, um, the app as much as possible. Although the app itself has some features that are a little bit more interactive. And as you will see here, that's a map of Brooklyn and a little piece of New York City and Manhattan. Um, and you will see the different artist studios and where they're located. Now the address of the artist studio does not show. It is mostly a location, it's like a round circle and it's in the area of. So your address will never be visible here unless you want it to be. And you will see here a little map of our of the US and where our artists are now located. Uh, you might also see a few green dots around the world. That's because some of our artists live both in the US and somewhere else or they're away on residency programs or they're teaching for a year abroad. So as long as you have a US practice, even if that's part-time, at this point, you would be able to be part of Art Fair. Um, and we will be opening up to international artists possibly in 2022, but I'm not 100% sure, so I don't wanna promise it. Um, just kind of an overview of what art, a, a patron or a collector could, could discover on Art Fair is really, uh, discovering the meaningful aspect of 
art and connecting directly with professional working artists, um, being able to buy directly from them, being able to support the artist community, being able to keep track of our, your collection and um, make sure that you support living working artists in the, in, in the local community and in the community overall. Um, the other thing is that you have access to a curated selection of artists. All our artists are handpicked and because of that, it gives this um, additional layer of um, credibility and safety when, when knowing that you are working with a professional working artist and you will receive a beautiful piece of art from them that has meaning. Um, we are also working on developing a side of art fair that focuses on collectors, um, but that's, that's still in testing. So I will introduce that in a little bit. For artists, which is why we're here really talking about artists and art fair for artists, art fair was built for artists and it gives you direct access to collectors with very fair commissions. Our commissions for sales and art fair are only 10%. And we offer you a bunch of different tools. The idea of art fair is that we are a set of tools for artists. We're not a gallery. And that's something that I always wanna present in the beginning so artists don't get confused and don't expect in a way for us to represent them as a gallery would. We in, we offer you different types of tools. And then outside of those tools that I will go over, you will always have access to a curator. You will have access to our own promotions, our own digital exhibitions, our own, um, in a way, gallery services. But we don't offer that to every artist on an every month basis. It's truly just about being part of this community, having access to, to these tools and taking advantage of them and taking advantage of what we can offer you as as different types of services. And so the idea is that you can add, manage your artist profile and artwork. Uh, you can schedule studio visits with collectors. Uh, you will know who the buyers are. You could get in touch with them. You'll have that information. And not just the buyers, but people that might reach out to you uh, that are art professionals. We have seen a lot of collector, uh, I'm sorry, curators reach out to artists from art fair. We have seen galleries and art dealers reach out to artists on art fair because art professionals are actually using art fair as a, a directory of professional working artists. So it does help beyond you presenting your work and selling your work. Um, you would have access to all our promotion and validation, which is we do a bunch of different newsletters on a weekly basis. We do a new artist newsletter. We do um, highlights for different artists. We do digital curation. We have curators that we invite to art fair from the outside to create exhibitions. Um, we have professional development webinars that we run about four to five times a year discussing different themes that we feel are the most important at that moment for the artist community community in the digital sphere, but also outside of the digital sphere. Uh, we also promote all your news. So if you have an exhibition coming up, we will promote that in our newsletter across all our social media platforms and on our Discover pages, both on the app and on the website. So we truly try to elevate you and your practice as much as possible. Um, okay, and then I always like to explain that Art fair is an, in a way is an extension of your studio practice. It's your digital studio space. So I always tell artists to please think of it as a, a rotating space. Like what do you have in your studio that you're working on right now? Maybe show some of that work, but maybe there's some work that hasn't seen the light of day for years because it hasn't been shown in a gallery because it's been sitting there for a long time and you've been focusing on other things. So, so show some of that work. You use the space, not just to post six artworks and leave them there forever. You want to use it, you want to utilize it, you want to change artwork around, you want to have special exhibitions that you can show yourself and say, there's a new series that I'm presenting only on Art Fair for the next three months. Um, we also help promote events like that or um, art um, special drops like that in a way. Um, and then this kind of goes over, as you can see, our whole, uh, the benefits of being a member of Art Fair. You would obviously have participation in a group of professional artists, ability to connect to your peers, um, potential to connect to patrons, curators, art professionals, um, 
these potential for studio visits or for conversations to be started, um, marketing assistance with all your up upcoming news and exhibitions. Uh, we, we have a very uh, demo uh, democratic uh, schedule of promotion for all our fair artists that we do on a rotating basis. So you will fall into all the different criteria promotion and you will be part of all the newsletters that we do. Um, we, we have around 40,000 audience members across all our platforms and that's our newsletter, our social media platforms and our app itself. Uh, we have guest curators that we invite um, almost on a monthly basis to look at art fair and present an exhibition. Sometimes those exhibitions are in person, sometimes they are, or they exist somewhere in, um, in a brick and mortar or they're just digital. Now, because of COVID, sadly, a lot of these features of having events in person or or setting up studio visits in person have kind of been on hold. So we are very excited about what's going to be coming up now that things are opening up in New York and we're able to gather again and being able to collaborate on having real physical um, exhibitions and meeting in person. Um, you will also always have an access to an art fair curator um, for questions about your profile, pricing, curation of your platform, of your actual profile. So I would always be here or one of my colleagues to kind of address any questions you might have. Um, yeah, and you will see here one of these screen grabs of one of the artists on art fair. Um, and you will see how she uh, shows some of the images in the background of her studio. Okay, um, these are just some screen grabs of what you can see on Art Fair. Uh, these are some news from our artists that we promote also on our, uh, as I said, on all our, our website, our app, and across all our social media and newsletters. You will see these are really new news. They're happening this week. Um, so this is also very exciting because it keeps the patron in the know and it, it allows for artists to get more followers uh, and more, more, attend more attendance for their events. Again, more exhibitions happening right now and some of them are not as Sarah Ebrook has a site specific ex uh, installation right now. So they're not all exhibitions. They can be outside of an exhibition realm. They could just be something interesting that's, uh, that you would wanna get more, more attendance to uh, and you wanna get the word out from your professional practice. We have started a virtual studio visit um, program last year when COVID hit. And we did that because initially we were actually doing uh, studio visits, curated studio visit, visits where we took collectors around and we went to three or four different studio visits around a specific neighborhood in Brooklyn or somewhere in New York. Uh, sadly, because of the whole COVID thing, uh, we weren't able to be in person anymore. So we started this event and we have it every Thursday at 6 p.m. if you ever wanna join. Um, we, we pretty much have a virtual studio visit or interview with one of our artists. Um, you can see some examples of that. We also do artist features. These are mostly for specific series that artists are presenting mostly on art fair. So um, they kind of have to have that unique aspect to them. They have to be recent and they have to be works that are not available anywhere else. And we try to, to promote these features almost every two weeks, I would say, depending on how many requests we have from our artists. And you can see here, Fang Bui is one of our partners, but also a curator. So he sometimes will um, do um, curatorial selections and pick artworks from Art Fair to present. Um, these are some of the wonderful cura artist curators from the assembly room. And uh, they, uh, in the past summer, they actually their exhibitions were put on hold so they could not have them in person. So they utilized the art fair platform to present their exhibition, exhibitions virtually through, through us. Um, I'm, going, I'm going to kind of go over, I cannot sadly show you the app because it's obviously on my phone and the app does not exist on my computer. Uh, if you do have some time and you have an iPhone, I would recommend getting the app. It's really, really fun to use. It's a tool. It's, it's really interactive and um, beautifully designed. 
And I just grabbed a few screenshots to kind of show you the different things you can find on our Discover pages. So you will see here, we have the news from our artists, we have the virtual studio visits, we have artist features, and then we have different curations that one of us here at Art Fair changes almost every week. So this Discover page is constantly changing and constantly being looked at by us, the curators, to keep the content very high quality. Um, you can also see here, we have this new artist section. So you will always see as new artists are added to Art Fair, you can find them here. Uh, we promote their new artworks that have been added to Art Fair, which is why we always recommend that if you do join Art Fair, you would change your artwork on, I would say, every few months to keep your profile fresh. Um, there's some other aspects here of our Discover page and all the different themes that we have at this moment on our Discover page and different curations that you can explore. Uh, some of the art fair tools that are very interesting to me is uh, you will see here that for you section. So you can join as an artist as well. And you would be in right now you can join art fair as, as a patron. So you would be looking at art fair and using it as if you are a collector or um, an art professional. And you will be able to, as, as you use it more, the algorithm learns what you like and it recommends different things to you. It can recommend different artists, different artworks. Also, once you start, uh, there's this kind of social aspect to art fair. You can follow an artist, you can save their artworks. And uh, that way, in, in a way, builds your private collection. And then the algor algorithm will show um, our art that they recommend that it recommends for you. It will show any new artist on art fair and new from the artists that you actually follow. So if you like five artists and you kind of like want to be in the know of if they add, they're adding new work or if there's some news coming up from them, that section will be able to kind of curate that for you and let you know what is happening based on your own likes. And again, this is mostly more, more beneficial for the actual collector than for the artists, but I'm kind of showing you what their experience would be. Um, again, another screenshot of our map feature. This is really great. And ideally that's what we would envision is eventually you could fly to a different, sorry about that, my door is ringing, I'm not gonna answer it. Um, you could fly to a different city. Let's say you're going to Berlin and I'm a curator, I'm going to Berlin and I wanna to connect to the local community there. I would um, pull out the Art Fair app and look to see and find all the artists that have studios in that area. And then at that point I can set up a studio visit. I can uh, meet them at one of their openings. So it's really truly about connecting, um, connecting you on a local aspect. Um, and then you could also see here one, uh, what buying an artwork would look like if someone's going through the process, you will see the artwork, you will see the price, the artist, the medium, and then you could easily just message the artist to ask a question, or you can just purchase it right away. Uh, this is an example of an artist profile. Again, this is, I'm sorry about that. Um, this is a Alex Walkovitz. She is a textile artist and she also works with sound and drawing and you will see her profile, you will see her about section and then you will see uh, where her studio is located and the artist she follows and the artists that follow her. Um, how we've been growing Art Fair is Art Fair has been built pretty organically. We are mostly growing our community through word of mouth through invitations from our curatorial team and aligning ourselves with like-minded organizations and um, partnerships with uh, foundations and organizations that are artist-centric. Uh, as I mentioned, we have about 600 artists on Art Fair right now. They're all US-based or they have a US practice part of the year. Um, Art Fair artists are handpicked by curators or can apply uh, through a monthly application process. Our patrons kind of going over all the details of our numbers of patrons across all our different platforms. Um, these are some of the statements and reviews from our artist community. You might recognize some of these artists if you are from New York City, they're all from around here. Um, and then the price for Art Fair is because we are a, in a way a set of tools, 
we offer those digital tools for a $20 a month membership. We have no contracts. We have no consignments over your work. You can join our fair and you can uh, pause it at any time. You can cancel it. And you think of it as if you're paying like a very small amount of rent for your digital studio space and for these tools when you see fit and then you wanna use them. Um, the other services that we offer, the marketing of the events, the curatorial aspect, that will fall into the other section. And that's more of our gallery services. And that's fully free for you. And it will only, we would only really uh, take advantage of that if you sell any kind of work. And if you sell work through Art Fair, we offer 10%, we, we take 10% commission on work sold, which is very, very low. And I usually recommend that all artists would price their work as they would in a gallery as you do never you never want to tarnish your price point by uh, let's say pricing it um, studio pricing which I know some artists do I would not do that I would just price it as you would for a gallery and that just means you're getting more of that percentage and you can use that for your studio practice you can use that to buy materials and to continue doing your work and that's really why we started our fair to give back more to the community by taking really low uh, commission. Um, we also offer discounts on yearly memberships, referral credit, and if we partner up with an organization, we might offer additional discounts. So um, just leaving that out there. Um, for the future, so we are now in the stage, you'll see this live stage is we are here focused only on the artist and the collector and that connection between the two. Uh, eventually, we want to add this other side, which is having art fair for collectors and these would be so they can manage their collection so they can sell secondary art um you know on a way secondary market art to each other and in a way for them to exist on this platform alongside the artist and for us is we want to cross pollinate between all the different groups of individuals that could help each other out so we want the artist to be the one that most benefits at the end of the day. So by bringing these art professional, professionals and by bringing collectors on board, we hope to create this really nice large community that could eventually just kind of run on its own and support each other through different types of exchanges. Um, so we're testing this art fair for collectors and in the future, we want to expand internationally. We want to um, be able to have artists and um, artists from all over the world. Our collectors are actually from all over the world. You can be a patron from anywhere. So we have a lot of uh, collectors from Europe as well that constantly uh, buy art and connect to our artist community. It's just that our artists right now have to be US-based and have a US-based account, um, bank account. We also work in a very limited number right now with gallery members. I call them gallery members, but they're mostly nonprofits, artists rent spaces, residency programs, and a curator rent projects. Um, and we, we initially did not plan to have them on Art Fair, but because they were in a way our artists that were running some of these spaces and that they were the curators that we were working on, we decided to offer our, our um, services and our tools also to them. And by having them on Art Fair, again, it creates this additional cross-pollination and opportunities for artists to connect directly to these galleries. And a lot of the times these galleries actually discover artists on Art Fair, and then they either take them on for exhibitions or even take, on, take them on to represent full-time. And we've had a few of these stories happen. And these are some of the organizations right now on Art Fair. I actually run No Sphere Arts, which is a nonprofit that as Natalie mentioned. And um, we, we're having a fundraiser at the end of May. I'm going to use Art Fair to run my fundraiser through, uh, use the tools of Art Fair to run the fundraiser for our event, for our summer events. So um, Art Fair is really great for also for galleries and nonprofits to use as they see fit. Um, and as you, you've seen, like it's also a way for them to get more followers, to use these selling tools and to promote their events uh, to over 40,000 other patrons that they wouldn't have access to on a normal basis. I think that's all. Um, this is my email. If you have questions, if you're interested in joining, um, just let me know directly. Uh, I would not ask you to go through one of the 
our application process yet, we can just start a conversation. Um, so if you are interested in art fair, or if you have questions or if you want to follow up with me at any point, uh, I would love to hear from you. It's just danielle at artfair.com. And I think that's it. I'm not sure how long that was. Okay, that was about 25 minutes. Um, so I'm going to stop share. Great. And then we can open it up to questions. I just had one question, Daniela, but I think um, you was, you responded to it was your partnership with Brooklyn Rail, for example, Brooklyn yes. Rail being one of the nonprofits that you were mentioning. Yes. I, okay. I was just curious how that partnership manifests itself, you know, since it's a, a publication, a great publication. That's very interesting, I find. So can you explain to us how it works? Yes. So um, we've done a few different things with them. One of the things is we've had a, like a special exhibition that they kind of were co-producing or covering. And we had that exhibition on art fair. Uh, we also, um, they had a few poetry readings that we co-produced with them. They had some, it, it was, they're pretty much creating content and creating uh, in-person events. We've also, we're a partner to their artist party that they have yearly. Again, that all happened in 2019 before, before COVID. Um, and they're one of our cultural partners. So we actually have every month in the Brooklyn Rail, you will find one page that highlights 50 art fair artists. Um, so every every month there's a new group of artists from art fair that get highlighted in the Brooklyn Rail. Um, uh, their names get highlighted in the Brooklyn Rail. So it's in a way it's like we we do some in-person projects with them and then we kind of host them in a sense. They've done some um, editorial work for that has covered art fair and that we have um, hosted these different types of types of events. And then we've also presented uh, there. They also have a similar event on Mondays, I believe um, that Brooklyn talks or something around lunchtime as well. And we presented art fair as well. And we curated three different artists to speak about their practice and how they use the digital tools in general, not specifically just artist folk, uh, art fair focus, but how artists are now using the digital world and how they've been using it in the past year, especially for COVID. And, and just for those of you who don't know what the Brooklyn Rail is, it's a um, publication um, for arts and it's based out of Brooklyn and basically their publications are free. So we, they distribute the journal in various locations, including at Residency Unlimited, not so recently because of COVID, but it really is a very fantastic publication with, you know, eminent curators and critics who write about artists. So, you know, it's a great, it's a great platform and I just find it very interesting that they are one of your partners <clears throat> because it shows also the art artist centric focus that you have as, fundamentally a commercial platform because your your role is to support artists but at the same time to facilitate you know um sales connections etc yeah so the idea is that as, as you said it is a it is a for-profit entity it is a company uh, at the end of the day, at this point, at this moment, I feel like we're running it like a nonprofit. At this moment, course, eventually yeah. it will. When, as I mentioned, when we become global, when we integrate uh, a side of collectors, when there's going to be this global demand, and artists, curators are going to start using the tools. Like I, I imagine one day, curator just getting an art fair profile for three months, doing a pop up exhibition, using our digital tools to promote their event and to sell the work in that exhibition, and then coming on. So there's just so many different things that can happen. Um, as, as you give people tools, they will use them as they see fit and as they, as, as they need them. And that's what we want to do is we want to give you all the tools that you might need to run a small artist ran gallery, to run your studio space, to run even a nonprofit in a sense. Um, and or a curatorial practice that doesn't have a permanent 
a brick and mortar space. And we wanna give you those tools, but at the end of the day, we wanna remind everyone that we're artist focused. And at the end of the day, we want the artist to benefit out of this the most. And so we wanna bring all these individuals on board. So we become that one place where everybody goes for different types of digital tools. And at the end, at the end of the day, that will benefit the artists because they will now have access to this whole group of individuals across different parts of the art world. Um, I see there was a question about locality. We invite and we, as long as you are part of New York, uh, I'm sorry, the US, you can be on Art Fair. Um, so it doesn't matter. I see someone ask me um, about Jersey City. Yes, definitely. So as long as you are US based or you have a US based account and you have a US part time based practice, as I mentioned, we have some artists that are now stuck in Europe <laughs> that are an art fair, um, but they, they, they live part time in New York and they, they were able to continue being on art fair and some of them sold work and they just shipped it from Europe. I think you have another question. Do you see Rotem question? Yes. So the, uh, so the activity, um, really, if you think about it, it's, it's two types of things is how much an artist is using art fair is like, if you tell us you have, for example, exhibitions and we promote your exhibitions, if you add new work on a constant basis, we will promote that work. Then the activity you might be able to see is people reaching out to you to buy work or to ask you a question. Uh, sometimes they will reach out to you through art fair. Sometimes they'll reach out to you directly because we do list your website, your CV and your social media on your art fair profile. So sometimes uh, an art professional might find you through art fair, but reach out to you directly. So I always recommend to ask where people found you and came across your work. I think it's a very important question to ask in general. So you know what type of uh, platforms and entities are actually bringing attention to you from this group of individuals. Um, obviously you would possibly be able to sell work. Again, this is also up to you, is that keeping your, um, keeping your profile updated, you using our tools as if it was um, uh, you, an extension of your studio practice, um, including that you are an art fair. For example, I know artists that added in their newsletter saying, I am now part of art fair, check my profile out, or they put it in their signature or they put it on their contact page. And now mm -hmm. so if anyone is coming through from anywhere to your website, they now know that they can buy your work from art fair or at least some of your work, because obviously you're not gonna post everything on art, but you might have a specific piece. Like if you're working in installation or you're working in large pieces and you just have a set of drawings that you wanna put on art fair, then in a way that supports your other practice of building installation work. Um, so yeah, the, the, in a way it's like, it's a, it's a two-sided road. Like we do a lot of the work. We do a lot of promotions. We do a lot of newsletters. We do as many things as we can do to promote your work and your name. At the same time, the more active you are, the more activity you will get from Art Fair, both in sales and in um, actual connections with other people. If you yourself as an artist use art fair as well and follow other artists like their work, that, that your profile becomes more visible across art fair. Like you will show up in an artist, this artist follows or uh, liked by the artists you follow. And so the more active you are because it is an algorithm in a sense to an extent, um, the more you will have more visibility on our fair and could expect more energy. And that energy can come, as I said, from a professional connection to a collector setting up a studio visit with you to a conversation, to a sale and to more people attending your events because we are promoting your news. Um, another question I had is you mentioned although you don't have the international um, artist capacity yet, but that you could organize for a collector to have access to studios in Berlin? So that's the dream. That's when okay. we become international, yes. Okay. And the reason why this is, is it's all about like money exchanges. Like when we have to, we have to set up ourselves to be an international entity and also to build a team that could be in Berlin's like, 
finding artists and being being on the ground in a way. Uh, the idea that is eventually we will have curators around the world kind of inviting artists to art fair and we would have a representation in Berlin. So let's say I go to Berlin for vacation this summer as a curator and I open my art fair app and I, I, I find let's say 30 artists that have studio practices around Berlin and now I can set up some studio visits and I can see if there's any exhibitions happening uh, those two weeks that I could attend. So it, in a way it opens up this these cities to you as a collector, as an artist, or as an art professional. We're not there yet. We're only like, you can only have that experience in the US now. So you could go to LA, you could go to Chicago and open the app and have that experience where you can see the artist studios um, all around um, and being able to connect with them directly. Thank you. Are there any questions that you would like to ask? I'm going to share my email again. And... Wait, there's one question I think from Gabriella. Oh, fantastic. Let me know. Gabriella, maybe you want to just, um, instead of typing it, you just can say it. Hi, can you hear me? Ah, yes. Uh, I'm from Italy, so I, I am so happy to enjoy the meeting. So I have the question, just in case you want to uh, just to open your platform, do you think it's possible to find some a European partner in terms of maybe someone that is working like you, like a, a sort of, um, of partner over your project that maybe they, someone can do the same in Europe and creating exchange to create this kind of ecological <laughs> art uh, situation. What do you think about? Is it possible to open for international artists and professionals in general? Yes. So our plan is that we are doing, we ourselves are doing that. I actually have already built like, uh, so I invite artists to art first. I'm mostly like doing research all day, like finding, finding artists. And uh, I, you know, follow residency programs and grant programs and group exhibitions and museum shows. And I find these amazing artists and I create a list and then I invite them to art fair. Now, the thing is that a lot of these artists are actually international. So I already have a very large number of international artists and even international organizations and nonprofits and small artist ran spaces that I am eager to get in touch with once we open it up internationally. We are just not there because it's, it takes time to get approved to, to exchange and sell things outside of the US. So it's not really about having representation and we will, once we open it up to Europe, we will probably hire curators or art representatives uh, all around artist liaisons to be able to help us build a very strong curated community. And again, one thing about Art Fair is that we are very focused on quality and all our artists are professional working artists. All our artists are, um, you know, they have an active studio practice. They have an active exhibition record and, and um, their CV is, you know, just very, very strong. So we are never, we're never going to be in that point where we have too many artists. It's, and because of that locality factor, because artists are located in Berlin or in Rome or in um, Lisbon, then we would have this locality aspect that will always keep it intimate and small, no matter if it if itself grows more than that. And we are going to be international. We are going to be doing that, and I'm very excited to take that on. Hopefully, in 2022. So my question is, are you open to uh, accept some proposal in terms of if after this meeting that, or just, just to um, having your information, just in case something yeah. can, okay. This yeah. I'm very open. As I mentioned, I'm already building this yeah. international so like system and things, you know, and that that's why I'm asking because it's one of the most interesting and open things I'm just, uh, uh, jumping in the, in, the, in the last years. So I'm so happy about that. It's a big dream. I can say that it's a big dream, but I'm totally happy about that. So 
um, I just want to ask if you are open to a uh, proposal. Yes. Of course, yes. Uh, you have my email, just don't hesitate to reach out to me with anything. Okay. Um, as I said, we are building, we are building connections, partnerships, and kind of building up for this step of going international. And we need to be prepared for that. We need to have a very strong backbone and community already knowing about what we do um, before we do launch internationally. Yeah, that's great. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Any more questions? Or is it time to go to have lunch? <laughs> yeah, lunchtime. I haven't even had breakfast yet, so I'm excited. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. This was wonderful. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Uh, and thank you for presenting this uh, RU. And uh, thank you for giving us this fantastic talk. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you being here. Uh, you have my email if any questions come up or if you want to address anything specific, I will be happy to, to discuss. Thank you so much, Daniela, and we'll be in touch soon. Thank you. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have Thank a nice you. day. Enjoy awesome. lunch, everyone, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> or Thank dinner you. in some cases. Bye. It was great. Thanks.